Hi all and welcome to Carl Portwood Craft. I'm Carl and today we're going to be looking at the Airbauer ER2100 watt powered router. On taking a look at the box itself we have a 3 metre cord which is excellent for making sure we don't get that cord snagged and when we're working on a weight piece having it too short which you definitely don't want when working with a machine like this. Also on the front of the box we can see the collet size we have a uh, half inch, one quarter and three eighths. And then we also have that in millimeters, which is six, eight or 12 millimeters. Uh, this is to do with the power ratio, this symbol here. Uh, if you wanna know a bit more about this, I suggest you look in the description of on the Airbauer website itself. Uh, the next box is the maximum depth cut, which is 60 millimeters. We also get supplied three cutting bits, which we'll look at when we get into the box. We've got the three different collet sizes supplied. We have a centering pin. We have the parallel guide assembly. We have dust extraction port. We have supplied two template guides and a spanner. So after seeing where it says on the front of the box, let's get it open and see what we've got inside. So we have the instructions, we have the main body of the router itself, three cutting bits, the depth guide, the parallel guide assembly at the top with the two template guides, the different size collets and the centering pin, dust extraction and the spanner. So the first thing we're going to look at is the box itself. It's a decent carry, carry case, plastic construction, plastic hinges and two fasteners. Everything was inside the box nice and securely and no complaints there. So if we start looking in at the router from the top portion here, if we break it down into, into two portions from the handles up, we have the two soft grip handles for ease of control and they feel solid and really grippy. Uh, so they look, they look good. On the top we have the scale wheel which is in Imperial by the looks of it. On the top we have the control wheel for adjusting the depth itself. We have the standing feet for placing the router down and we have air vents for cooling the motor. We have the speed dial located here. The speed dial goes from one to six and that's a little bit on the slippery side, first feel. If we spin the router around, you can see here we have the on off switch. Located next to the on off switch we have the lock on lock off switch. Turning the router around again located here is where the depth stop scale should be positioned which came separately so if we place that in its location we have a nailed knob to secure the depth stop in its uh, position and then at the bottom we have the step buffer which obviously can be moved into different positions and the and the scale locked in position. We'll look at that more in depth later. Here we have the locking lever for the depth adjustment. So when we plunge the router down to the depth we want it, we can lock that in position and unlock it. Coming down towards the bottom now, we have the parallel guard, securing knobs, one on either side. And then coming to the bottom of the machine, we have the base plate. 
located in the center we have the serial number and the machine details of manufacture the machine is made in china and we've got the serial number here which you'll need for using when registering for your guarantee and any faults and repairs and i think that's everything i think that's everything on the machine itself covered for name parts but if there's anything we've missed we'll look at them when we use the machine itself next we're going to look at the parallel guide assembly so on the parallel guide assembly then guys we have the the rods the securing rods we have the parallel guide buffers we have the parallel guide securing knobs we have the center pin location the scale wheel for the fine adjustment knob which is located on the top and i believe that's everything on there so we've had a good look in the box and all the contents and a look at the machine and all the name parts now we're going to move on to looking at the machine actually in action now what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be making several cuts dados grooves housing joints uh rebates things along them lines and uh, we'll see how it performs and my first impressions of the machine i've got these hand planes here and i need to build a box to situate these in so it's a perfect opportunity to see the machine in action for its first time so i'll start the build and then as i come up to the the sections of the build where i need to use the router at all possible opportunity we'll use this machine to do them tasks and then we'll get a good understanding and a feel for the machine right guys so the first piece we're going to cut is a rabbit on the end of this board here and we've got the parallel guide assembly attached we've got dust extraction attached and just for full clarity i'm not using an air bower bit at the moment because i didn't have one that suited the uh, rebate that i need to cut i've got one of my cheap chinese bits fitted and uh, that's a, a quarter inch shank and uh, We'll make the cut. I'm just going to clamp this down to the work piece. Clamp the work piece down to the bench. I'm going to take my glasses off because I steam up when I put this on. Definitely advise using dust extraction and a mask because you still get does quite a good job at sucking most of the stuff up but you get a bit coming out this way it's quite dusty down here uh, so definitely have dust extraction and a mask let's see how that fits it's a lovely cut nice clean cut through the veneer and uh, no complaints obviously that's a lot to do with the blade obviously the the blade that i was using on the router bit uh, has cut through there nicely but was relatively easy to set up i'm not 100 percent set on uh on the the fine adjustment on the parallel guide i did find that a bit fiddly uh, to tell you the truth i'm not 100 percent certain i'm working that correctly uh if anyone has got any information on that uh please you know do share it i will endeavor to figure out how to work that <laughs> precisely and i'm going to do a follow-up video on this machine uh when i've given it a good a good bit of use over the months but the parallel guide itself is easy to attach it was easy enough to put the end of the blade up to the pencil line and lock it off i didn't really use the fine adjustment uh, i like i say i'll i'll get to grips with that over the months of using it uh real nice easy control good good large grippy uh carrying handles and 
a nice surface area with it being such a big router. Very powerful, went straight through it with ease and I just took it slowly but it cut through it with ease. Very stable and no, no problems whatsoever doing that cut. So we've done a, a rebate, that was great. Uh, we'll, prob we'll, we'll cut a, a dado or a housing joint next and then we'll cut a circle. So for the next cut guys, we've removed the parallel guide system and we've still got the uh, quarter inch collar in and we are cutting a dado for a three quarter inch piece of uh, material and we've set a straight edge up and we're going to make that cut now following the straight edge and we'll see how the machine performs doing the dado. I don't know if you caught it there guys, but the uh, the router bit that I was using was struggling to get through there. In all, in, in all honesty, that should have been done in two passes with that bit in. Uh, I've gone straight for it and uh, it was definitely the machine, the, mach the power of the machine 2100 watt power definitely got that little bit through there but it's scorched and it's scorched the inside of the wood the machine performed excellently uh, we got a nice tight accurate fit got one more cut to uh, try and we're gonna we're gonna use the centering bit on the parallel guide system and we can do a circle with that we're probably gonna cut half circle I think and we'll do it in a couple of passes and we'll make sure that we get a nice, safe, accurate cut with that. Right guys, the next cut we're gonna do is the circular cut. And uh, we're not gonna cut a full circle, we're just gonna cut a rounded portion on the edge of this piece of timber here. We've reattached the parallel guide system. However, we've took the parallel guide buffers off and we've inserted, and we've inserted the centering pin. And the centering pin locates into the centre of the piece of wood that you're going to be cutting and then it rotates on its axis like this. So we've done the sensible thing and we've reduced the depth of cut this time and we're going to do this cut in three passes. Obviously with it being a circular cut it's a little bit more tricky and we want the, to make sure that the, the, the uh, route of it goes through there uh, nice and smoothly. If you are doing uh, a complete circle there is some of the videos that you'll want to check out uh, which I'll pop in the description below because you, you there is a possibility of the timber pinching and there's different techniques you can use to stop that happening with this cut because we're only doing uh, not even a semicircle we won't have any problems with that so I'll make this last cut and then we'll finish off the video with a quick recap and and my final thoughts on the machine itself. So we cut that nice uh, rounded edge on there and we did it in a few passes and even with my cheap Chinese blade on we've got a nice cut there because we did it in several passes and underneath the work piece I had uh, some sacrificial pieces so I didn't go into my workbench and you can see the shape there. So that worked well. So in summary then. Uh, We'll go right back to the beginning, what we've what we got. We got a, a good, strong, steady carry case. Uh, we've got uh, value for the money in the amount of kit you get with it. Three bits, the parallel guide, the, uh, the obviously all the general bits and bobs of spanner, the dust extraction, uh, the centering, centering pin, which so you can use the parallel guide for circles. 
Uh, I don't know how often I'll use that to be honest, but it's there in case I do need it. Uh, the machine itself uh, feels good quality, uh, feels robust, it's very powerful. A nice wide base keeps it steady over uh, the the weight piece. And uh, yeah, I think it's uh, definitely value for money. The reason why I've I didn't I was going to wait a while before I did this video because uh, I wanted to give it a full like a full good couple of months usage. But at the minute, it's on sale at Screwfix for eighty pound, and I just thought for a machine of this power and everything you get with it, it's a bargain. So I thought I'd get this out sooner rather than later. So it'd help you guys if you're looking for a machine yourselves. I think for 80 quid, you can't go wrong whatsoever. Uh, really good bit of kit for 80 quid. Fine adjustment, easy setup. Uh, the only problems I had was uh, the use of the fine adjustment on the parallel guard assembly. That might be just me. Let me know if someone else has got this machine out there, how you found it, and you know if there's any advice you can give me. But I found it a bit fiddly, and I I just adjust it uh, like like you would any other parallel guide. Do I think this would replace my palm router? No, not at all, because my palm router is great for doing my sign writing. It's great for roundovers. It's great for you know the small work where you don't need a lot of power and work small accurate detailed work it's great for that uh, this is great for taking out a good chunk of material in one go and because it's so powerful going through harder woods possibly and because of the base and the stability of the machine when you need that control rather than a little palm router which can wobble a bit so Great combination to have the two for me, and uh, I'm looking forward to using it in the future. So I hope this has helped you with making your decision on what route you're going to choose, guys. And if it has, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and think about subscribing. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye.